everything started then. Yeah. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? This is episode 36 of the Whatnots Review Show, where each week we have a different story to talk about. Could be a comic book, could be a movie, an anime, manga, something else. We read it, we watch it, we do what we have to do, and come back here and talk about it. My name is Kyle Springer, and I am joined by Melissa Wilkinson. How are you? I'm good, Kyle. How are you this week? Yeah, doing good. I had a good, like, evening, night last night where I was Mm -hmm. finishing up watching uh, Kino's Journey, which is what we're going to be talking about. Mm -hmm. Um, And I, like, swept my room. I put new bed sheets on my bed. I did all my laundry. It was just, like, (laughs) it it was one of those nights where you're productive and, like, I feel like an adult. Good. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) One of the rare times that I don't feel like a 13-year-old who's (laughs) way into (laughs) comic books. (laughs) But uh, yeah, so how are you? I'm good. How was I... your week? And you, you, you went to get some kind of brunch sandwich right before this. I did do that because I this morning I was finishing up the show and I was watching it through the Hulu app on my Blu-ray, pl- Blu-ray player. Blu-ray player. Blu-ray. Blu-ray. <laughs> and. <laughs> This thing is getting on in its years. It's like among the first generation of the smart Blu-ray players with the apps on it where you can watch everything. And it keeps telling me, I'm not connected to the internet. You're going to have to reset your internet. And I'm like, no, buddy. No, the the internet's working. The problem is you. (laughs) The internet is working on everything else in my house. And it's not like you're connected, but you're really slow because everything else is also connected. No, it's like, I don't have it. It's not working. So today I was fed up with it and I took some extra time and I just went to Best Buy and I just bought me a Roku. Okay. <laughs> so like, I'm done with this. I'll there keep you around as a Blu-ray player, literally just that, but I need a new streaming platform. A Roku is a good device. I've gotten my mom a Roku the past two years for Christmas. Just like, mm. I'll, I'll just get you the new updated one. Uh, this, this year I might see if i can just get them like a smart tv instead it's like i don't need to like you guys have an older t- tv why don't we just update your tv and get i mean they're all like smart ones now they all yeah. have an app so we'll yeah. see we'll see when i was what... at the best buy they looked cheaper than i would have imagined for something that yes. big and that smart did you know that oh i, I guess you d- did not know because this is the first time i'm telling you i've never bought myself a dvd player or a blu-ray player player i've always had like an xbox or a playstation yeah. and it all just it just had that stuff so mm-hmm. i strange strange <laughs> to me that these are still a thing um that being said let's move on to what we are ta- yeah, talking is, about so we don't bore talk. bore people half t- to death with our personal <laughs> lives um i'm sure they are bored a quarter of the way there so hopefully we can still <laughs> They're bored, mildly ill. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Not dead. This week, we are talking about an anime called Kino's Journey. Mm-hmm. Uh, there was a little slight confusion <laughs> between yep. y- y- you and, and, and me, too, because I, I, that's why I, m- 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 I messaged you. When I pitched this to you, I was only aware of a single anime version of this show uh it was from around like 2003 Mm -hmm. um and that's the one i i had watched a few years ago that's the one that i really loved and i was just like yeah let's do that one and then (laughs) i i remember seeing kino's journey on hulu but i didn't pay enough attention to be like wait that's a newer one what what is that? Did they make new episodes? <laughs> oh, your thing did the thing where it got small again. Your camera oh, no. and it, it just jumped back. We were I can promise you I'm this. the same size in real life. <laughs> I don't know. I've never <laughs> met you in real life, so <laughs> I, there there could be something with that, but we were dealing with Melissa's camera like changing sizes a couple t- times <laughs> during our latest episode of the captain's log which you guys can get on iTunes yeah. or at the whatnots.com um what was I saying yeah I did not know that there was a newer 
one. And so I was looking online. I was like, what is happening? There's more than what? Why is it? Who is this? What is why? I just I don't understand. Um, and so I messaged you and I was like, hey, just to avoid some confusion, I think there's two versions of this show that I was not aware of. Yeah, I meant the old one is have you like do you want to do the new one is that the one you started and you were like yeah i already started the new one so i was like all right let's just stick with that um so we are covering the newer version of kino's journey which i believe the full title is kino's journey a beautiful world the animated series Uh, it's yep, from like 2017, goes. and yes, yeah. it is on Hulu right now, mm-hmm. so you guys can go watch that if you have not already. Um, this is an anime I really love. Though this, I, I guess, I was new to this version yeah. of it. Um, so we'll dive into to that once we get into spoiler territory and stuff like that. What were you expecting, though, when I? P- p- pitch this what what was going through your mind i wasn't expecting what we ended up was very different than what i was originally picturing i was picturing uh like a like a road trip show i think you told me she has a motorcycle that talks so i was prepared for that so i go maybe it's like a buddy comedy and like a coming of age story about this this young woman and her talking motorcycle just traveling through the countryside just helping people and getting into scrapes and getting out of straight getting out of scrapes and meeting friends and yeah. learning stuff and no it's a lot more abstract than that and also this is less japanese than i thought like every setting they're going to is vaguely western and oh, I was just expecting more of like the Japanese countryside and like Japanese villages. Okay. And so that kind of surprised me. Gotcha. Yeah, it's 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 not really a coming of age story. I think you get bits and pieces yeah. of that, uh, but you kind of have to piece it together yourself because it's out of order and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, but this, I, I, I. I feel like I have trouble describing this, like what exactly the show is to people other than that. It's a very slow anime Mm -hmm. kind of about the beauty of the world. Yeah. And just like you can find some really strange places or some really fucked up places or some Mm -hmm. really delightful people or stuff like that. And each thing, um, whether they're bad or they're good, there's always something beautiful that you can just like. If if you really look for the silver la 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 yeah. la la lining, it's there somewhere. Mm-hmm. Um, but that that's just like okay, that's like a real philosophical thing. I don't understand. Yeah, so what is like, this show? Can, you know, I can describe the theme of it, but yeah, there's not really a plot. It is yeah, Kino and, it is, it is and just, her motorcycle yeah. travel from country to country. Yeah. And that's it. <laughs> yeah. That's it. Um, I, I, I mean, yeah, like that, that as far as synopsis, like that's basically it. It's they just go on this road trip, tr- tr- traveling from country to country, and that's it. And they, they yeah, just spend there's... each a- a- episode as a new stop. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So p- pretty easy to describe in that sense, but I, st- I, I still feel like it's it's hard to nail down down within one sentence exactly what this is to to have something that's like all encompassing if that makes sense maybe it's not and i'm 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 just stupid but you know (laughs) no i am i also no i also had a hard time like getting my head wrapped around this thing and like there are certain plot elements that reminded me of other stories but like the overall storytelling like the tone of the thing i couldn't like, I couldn't draw a parallel between this and anything else. Did this remind you of anything? Like, did you have, like, another story that you could use as a tool to help describe this to someone else? Um, I do, and I'll mention that in a sec more as, hey, okay. if, if you liked this, you should also yes. go check out that thing. But um, 
no, I, I, I think this is kind of unique as an entire picture, mm-hmm. but individually there are like smaller things like, oh, this r- might r- remind me of that story. Yeah. Or, you know, there's one thing that has like, there's certain episodes that have more action there's certain mm-hmm. ones that she's just sitting there and she's listening to this person speak and yep. that's it you know a lot of um, that so yeah again it's it's hard to nail down one thing specifically of of like if if you haven't seen it yet he like here's what else it's like that mm-hmm, was a terrible mm-hmm. Like sentence. there is no, yeah. it's this meets this sort yeah. of pitch you can give for it. Yeah. Um. That being said, the thing that I would recommend if you did go and watch this and follow mm-hmm. along at home, um, I would go watch Mushi Shi. It's another anime along the same lines. It's very slow. There's usually not much action. Um, and it's kind of about the beauty of the world and the people in it that is, that focuses though more on like hidden spirits and stuff mm-hmm. like this like I, I I guess the things behind the physical of what we don't exactly see and there's this guy who I, I haven't seen it in a while, so I don't remember his exact job title, but he's kind of like a spirit hunter kind okay. of thing. Not, that makes it sound like he's hiding and stuff like that. <laughs> more more like a psychic and stuff. Uh, you know, and he, okay. he, 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 or a medium. Or Wandering I'm not around sure what being it's called. a medium. Yeah. Yeah, just a medium and he'll just he'll wander into a village, and there'll be someone that's been sick, you know, for their whole mm-hmm. life, and he starts t- talking with them, and they, they get their the ba- the backstory and all of this stuff, and it it turns out it's some like spiritual thing, and you know, and there's there's some if he just goes and forgives this one person, then you know he'll he'll be f- fine. And it's it's a fantastic show, and it's beautiful. And I believe that's also on Hulu as well. Okay. Um, and I, I, I know for that one, there's at least two anime series for that mm-hmm. as well. That's Mushishi. This kind of reminded me of this audio drama called The Behemoth. Have you heard about this? I have not. I know we're both big audio drama people. There is it's- a certain episode that reminded me of a particular... Uh, audio drama uh lime town oh there was an episode that reminded me a lot about the earth collectives okay <laughs> like i was able to pull a lot of audio dramas that related to this <laughs> anime but i couldn't think of another like visual well, story or anything they, like they that also i think later on in the show they make reference like hey if this was an audio drama like yeah this would be the <laughs> grand finale type of thing um mm-hmm. and i was reading on their wikipedia page i think i think they had an audio drama version of Ooh. this show that was like you could if you buy a certain volume of the manga you could like order a cd that had them all on there mm-hmm. or something like that who knows yeah. Con- continue the behemoth is a story about this giant monster like stories tall just like ogre looking thing that walks out of the atlantic ocean Mm -hmm. onto like you know connecticut or wherever and just keeps walking like doesn't really like not trying to destroy anything not trying to do anything just yeah walking and there's this 15 year old girl who's like you know, kind of ignored or like teased at school and her parents don't treat her very well. Like they either neglect her, or, like put too much pressure on her. Like she's not happy with her life. And the entire town is like gathered, like, oh, the monster's going to come this way. Like they've tracked his path and they're going to come through here. And so everybody's like on like the city streets, just like watching the monster go by. And the girl's like, I'm just going to follow him. Like, Where's he going? It's better than where yet. I am. <laughs> yeah, and it's just about this giant monster who, like, doesn't talk, is barely sentient, this big monster, and this teenage girl just walking from the Atlantic to the Pacific. Interesting. Yeah, and it's also got that kind of 
slow, ponderous, like not really plot driven plot. It's very introspective and reflective. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. Um, Getting into housekeeping and stuff. First of Uh all, uh, if you guys are not already, you can be watching this show live. Yes. On twitch.tv slash the whatnots. Uh, and if you guys have been following along at home, which we definitely encourage you guys to at least mm-hmm. try something. Yeah. Follow along at home. The whole idea of this show is to find something new that's out there. So maybe you've never watched an anime before. Maybe you're not into crime TV shows or something. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Who knows? Try something out, follow along, along at home, and you guys can join us and be a part of the conversation here on twitch.tv slash the whatnots or on our website, uh, which is the whatnots.com slash live streams. Um, and what else do we got? Uh, go follow, like, share, subscri- yeah. subscribe, go do all of that stuff. Um our YouTube uh, could definitely use some more followers as well mm-hmm. as our t- Twitch, uh, which I just mentioned the website for that. So for YouTube, though, you can search the Whatnots podcast and you can find us there. Uh, iTunes reviews help as well. Yeah. We Check need out our some, Patreon. Yeah. Throw us a dollar. Yeah. More uh, than one dollar, but like a one is where you can start. Yeah, it's the, like, holiday season, so now's the perfect time where you can throw us all of your m- m- money and, yeah. and, and and have that moment where you can quote um, home, home Alone. Just say, keep the change, you filthy animals. Uh, <laughs> yeah, and that would make our day. So, uh, spoilers. Let's yes. get into spoilers and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, I, well, so... Kind of a brief aside before we okay. dive into spoilers exactly. You uh-huh. had said something about the commercials that you got a really <laughs> weird local commercial as you were yes. watching this. So I want to hear that story before we like legitimately dive into this yeah. this book. Okay. Or, uh, so I'm watching this on Hulu and it's about. got the commercial breaks. And like as soon as this commercial starts, I'm like, this is so weird. I have to make sure Kyle saw this. And then it turned out to be for a Missouri thing. So now I just have to describe it to you. <laughs> and it's like this group of coworkers having like a little office holiday party in a bowling alley. And like they're all dressed up, you know, like they've got elf ears and like Santa hats and like the light up Christmas light necklaces and all that stuff. Sure. And there's a guy who unwraps a package and it's a snowman mug and everybody flips out like joyously like they're so excited he oh got oh my a god that's the best thing off. ever and then it go- but they're doing it in like slow motion while like beautiful operatic christmas music plays in the background and they're like <laughs> screaming and one woman takes like a holiday sweater and, like tears it in half and like one guy picks up a bowling ball and just like ah and just like with joy launches the bowling ball across the room and it like smashes in all these shelves full of trophies and like the guy at the bar in the bowling alley has got the two like soda hoses and is just like joyously just sprouting (laughs) soda all over the place and it's a commercial for the missouri lottery and it says nobody's that excited when you're getting a snowman mug, get somebody a gift that might actually be worth something. <laughs> and it played it for me a lot, and I was so excited to see it every time. Amazing. That's the, that's the thing with Hulu, because you often see the same, like, four commercials over and yeah. over and over again, and just, it's terrible. <laughs> I, I, I had a weird commercial experience, too, though not as as like strange or specific as that Mm -hmm. like at least 50 percent of the commercials while i was watching this on hulu were in spanish i got a lot of spanish ones yes i'm i'm fine with but i've i've just never seen that many of them i'm Mm -hmm. like i i wonder if they're just investing in more like spanish advertisements because spanish is a like a highly spoken language here in the united states or did i do something to like make them think i'm spanish (laughs) child you do say hola and adios 
all the time. Oh, I don't know if you speak any other Spanish, but you really Especially do. Especially on the podcast. Me, yeah. Mi español es muy malo, so no sé. I, I, don't, I don't know any Spanish. Um, I, I, no, mean, I, I don't know. I know less than that. So to me, you're like Antonio Banderas, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, but yeah, so I, 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 like, I, I just didn't. I was like, huh. Strange to see all of those commercials in Spanish. Yeah. Oh well. I and then also I share a Hulu with my older brother, who was a kid, so I was getting a lot of toy commercials for like the new Dance with Me Elmo doll. Yeah. So mine were all over the place. Yeah. Yeah. But now to this actual show we were watching, and not the Hulu commercials. Yes. Uh, and uh, I'm I'm getting a shout out in the chat to my Metal Gear Solid poster here mm -hmm. it's fantastic i love it as well um yes kino's journey is what we were talking about um i let's see i this one it it's it's a little bit different from the original yeah tell me um, how this stacks up against the one you were you had in mind when you pitched this story yeah so it so I mean, it's it's the same basic concept, same kind of g general story of the you know this girl ch traveling with her motorcycle, stopping from country to country, um, and it, the older one it, it has older anime animation. It it is from like two thousand and three, mm -hmm. um, so I, I guess one of the first big differences is like the change in animation mm -hmm. um i think the older one pays less attention to animation is, is more on slower stories it's a lot quieter there aren't as many characters oh um, it's even slower and quieter than this is yeah oh uh, boy. i mean not not like drastically <laughs> But but like the, the the whole idea that there was that other set of characters, there was the dog whose name was Riku, I believe. Yeah, I and was then a big I I don't the dog. I don't remember the other like it's the prince, uh, grenade girl, and dog. Yeah, um, like the I I think they show up in an episode, but that's kind of it, and huh. then we never hear from them again. So it was strange for me to like, oh, we're following other characters in this newer version of the show. Um, and yeah, so like it, it, like there's more characters you follow in the S one. Um, not that there was much like action in this, mm -hmm. but I, I think there was more action in this version of Kino's j j j j j journey. Um, mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean it's it's kind of the same there's a few episodes that overlap uh the gladiator arena where she meets yeah. the 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 dude with the dog that one's in there though i think in the original one it's a two episode arc if okay. i'm not mistaken I could, it seems big enough be to be worth two episodes yeah um there's that and then there's the there's definitely the one where she meets the younger girl uh, with the like n with the flower name and the volcano erupts oh. and all of that there's definitely that or, or so like something very very similar uh and then i think uh when we is it um i, th I think we also see the one where she gets started yes I think okay. where she, where, she, where we see Kino as a young girl and learn that that's yeah. not actually her name, and there's yeah. this other p p person named Kino. It's all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, what 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 did you think though? Like, where do you want to start? Because okay. I those are kind of the main differences. But besides that, it's all new stories. Um, so we, you, we were both new. You kind of had an idea of what to expect and i was expecting like an episodic uh like almost like the pokemon cartoon if you took like the pokemon battling aspect of it out like it's not ash traveling around to get a gym badge but like 
they're traveling around here's this town here's this town here's this town and it's all pretty episodic and they don't really stay anywhere yeah. i was picturing something kind of like that just with all the pokemon removed and instead there's a talking motorcycle like she's traveling she goes somewhere like meet somebody learns a lesson helps somebody out like her skills come in handy like i i think i knew she was like a markswoman yeah so i'm like oh maybe she's gonna get into like old west gunslinger fights or something like that she almost does in that yeah first one i was expecting all the episodes to be more like the first two episodes are and I didn't really get it when they kept deviating from that. Like the episode with the slave girl and like the poisonous herbs. I was like, how did we get here? Where yeah. are we? Like, why are we watching this? I don't understand. This has a number of episodes where like we don't follow Kino. We see no. someone else's story and then Kino kind of happens to show up. In the, in the thing, which I I didn't like as much, but it's still I mean they were all still fant fantastic stories. Yeah, um, yeah. It, there like, were a lot. Hmm? Go ahead. No, there were a lot of concepts in this series that I liked. Like I I think my favorite setting they were in was the big traveling city. Okay, yeah. I loved is, is that. Is that the story. one that kind of reminded you of the Hemoth? Uh, of the Earth, a little bit of Behemoth, and there's a story called the the Earth Collective. Do you know that podcast? I don't. It's a it's a smaller one, but it's really good, and it's about this future where humans have traveled to another planet, and some meteorite or something strikes the planet, and it makes it so that the dark is deadly essentially okay. and there's like sci-fi nonsense going on with that but essentially the entire civilization lives in one long caravan of trucks constantly driving so that they were always in daylight on that planet gotcha interesting okay yeah that makes sense so i like i like that concept a lot i like some of the stuff the story was playing with i didn't I wasn't super attached to Kino herself, but, like, I wanted more of her so that I would become attached to her. And, like, it was getting to the point around, like, the middle of the series where it's like, I'm not really interested in the general, like, individual things I like. But the general thing, I'm like, where is this going? Like, I don't know what's going on. And I was a little disinterested. And then it was that volcano episode. That yeah. volcano episode is so good. That brought me back completely because the ending is like almost tear jerking. Like that's yeah. such a good, it went back to like what episode like one and two have where it's like, here's this one self-contained, like Kino is in a city and this is how the city affects her story. And that's what I wanted. Yeah. You might like the older version then since mm -hmm. it does focus on Kino more and you do get to spend more time with her and and just like in her her thoughts because I, I i i don't remember in the older one if other people can hear hermes or not i don't remember it, it might be but yeah like i i feel like hermes is more an excuse for the show to like have her talk with herself <laughs> Rather yeah. than it's actually talking, but then it also t talks to other people at the same t time in yeah. this show. So I, 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 I don't know. But I loved Hermes. I liked that you weren't entirely like everybody knows what Hermes is. Nobody is surprised. There's They're something like, called a motorcycle. A, there's a motorad that is a talking motorcycle. It's like you know Knight Rider. Yeah. It's like. If Kit every car rider. was a night rider, but there were only like a handful of them anywhere. So when one shows up, it's like you've heard about it. Like, oh, Motorad, I've heard about those before. Hello, what's your name? <laughs> I'm Hermes. <laughs> I liked Hermes a lot. And I liked that she was like, you should be friends with that talking dog. And he's like, nah. And like, no, they were never friends. Like, it's like, I want a she motorcycle said, like, and a what? dog. A talking talk. dog? <laughs> I, all I want is a motorcycle and a dog to talk to each other. And the show didn't give it to I me. Think, let me see. I There was something in the Wikipedia page about 
Hermes. Um, uh, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Or no, is it about? That's not what I was looking for. Riku. So here, Riku is a talking dog of the uh, Samoyed breed. Oh, Samoyeds. Sure. Yes. Yes. Um, who travels with Shizu. He is a large white, uh, and his face seems to be always smiling. Apparently, in the anime, Riku has only spoken to Hermes. Uh, as Kino does not believe Riku can speak when told about the dis the discussion Hermes had with him. In the original anime version, Riku also speaks to Shizu, but in the English version, only barks or whimpers to him in these instances. In the novels, uh, Riku speaks to both Kino and Hermes, and in the 2017 anime, he speaks to both Kino and Hermes, much to the surprise of the latter. So this was originally like a Garfield situation. Kind of. Okay. Wow, yeah. you really could just like Garfield minus Garfield all over the show. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. <laughs> so let, let's let's take a step backwards then she's going from country to country what are these countries exactly because that was so, something that kind of trips me up I, I mean not really but they're not what i think of when i think of countries no like they're all self-contained and they don't share borders there's like one self-contained like walled in country a whole bunch of countryside and then another country and all of them have like a gatehouse and you register like yes i am a traveler i would like to be in your city for three days okay yeah. they seem more like on cities in. than they do countries yeah. um which which is is strange to me i i guess one thing this show does is it it oversimplifies a, yes. a lot of things mm -hmm. and i think it does that effectively and uses that to i think so like gi like give you an idea like hey here's a concept mm -hmm. let's let's simplify it and tell you a story based off of this concept um and and just like make it as self-contained as po possible right so that's yeah. why it is these these like smaller walled mm -hmm. off or, or, i guess like giant <laughs> cities Mm -hmm. um, where each each one is vastly d different from the, from the next, and I think that's part of also what makes the show so interesting is that they yeah. are so different. Yeah, the each city behaves differently than the last city. But I wish there would have been more of a change in like atmosphere and tone of the show, like for each setting being so different. I wish I wish just like the show would feel a little different. Do, do you get what I'm saying? Like it's yeah, got, it's always has the same sort of You, you slow, mentioned it was more ponderous. Western than you expected yes. it to be. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like, are, are, are you looking for more like different cultures in that sense of like one is I would very like... much German. One is very much J Japanese. One yeah. is like South Amer American, you know. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't not not that I want to see like all of the cultures in separate bubbles from each other, but yeah, all of the towns kind of have the same vaguely Western flavor to them. Not Western as in like cowboys, just Western as in like the Western Hemisphere, yeah. pretty much. Like, and I think it's the um the radio waves town that feels very American. Like the law enforcement officers are like nineteen fifty. Like there's or... sheriffs and there's yeah. pizza there, and it's got this real American feeling to it. And a lot of other things just have this sort of general like early Americana or like in, like Western Edwardian European. flavor to it. Yeah, yeah. There's a lot of like Western European areas that look like you know like there's windmills like in Holland or something yeah. like that. So I would have liked there to be like a little bit more cultural diversity among the different countries. Again, not to like the thing is that they're all separate. So I don't want it to be like these cultures are separate. They don't intermingle. So, but 
also, yeah, yeah, to uh, okay, go ahead. No, no, no. But what I was really getting at was that the tone and atmosphere of the show was kind of the same no matter where she went. I would have liked if she went into a town that was more chilling, like the show felt like a little bit more unnerving. Like it played with genre, just like in tone, like a tiny bit more than it did. Mm-hmm. Like it does a good job at staying consistent. And I, but I think it could just affect the atmosphere more and like show that Kino is feeling like really different and each country feels really different while still keeping this sort of cohesive whole to what the story is. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, yeah, it's less so about what the people look like and that, oh, this yeah. one is G- Germany or this one is Japan, you know. Yeah. Um, but it's it's more so kind of about the beliefs and, like, the l- yeah. laws in place mm-hmm. of each c- country. Because the very, very first episode is the one where it's like, hey, it's legal to k- kill in this mm-hmm. c- country. And before she gets in the, 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 there, she meets this guy who's also going to go to that country. Mm-hmm. And he, right away, you kind of get this feeling yeah. like, okay, he's going to fit right in. You know, you know he's mm-hmm. he's going to steal and kill and, you know, he's going to have a blast. And Kino goes on, uh, goes on to the country. Mm-hmm. And um, she starts meeting the pe- people, and they're all really n- n- nice. And she's like, huh, this is not what I expected. Like, this is a little strange. Why is everything so prim and proper here? Mm-hmm. This is weird. And then she's, like, out on the town, and that's when she almost gets in that gunfight that we yeah. mentioned. Where the guy she met outside is like, hey, I'm a brand new citizen. Killing is legal. Give mm-hmm. me all your stuff now or I'm gonna k- kill you. And she's just like, "I that, no. No thanks. No. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I, I'm just gonna go on my merry way. Like, you can mm-hmm. live here and do what you want. But I'm, you know, I'm not from here and at the start the whole town just seems to ignore it Mm -hmm. and almost walk away yeah and so and so it it starts to be this oh yeah killing really is legal there but then the whole town comes back and they all have their guns yeah all that stuff it's like i did like that distinction killing is legal but only as like a unified country Mm -hmm. like we all have to like be like hey we should kill this (laughs) person and this yeah this guy that like walked in there and was th- thinks he can just do whatever <laughs> he wants he's he's the one that ends up g- getting killed yeah um, i like that little twist at the end like it's not a town of depravity it's a town of people that like they want to protect themselves yeah like they have killed they can kill they don't want to there's going to be no repercussions when they feel like they need to yeah i was expecting more like Almost like Twilight Zony twists like that. It's, yeah, I I, I I can see why you I I would love to see more of that. That would be fantastic. Yeah. But I, I I think it's more so they 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 tell these like oversimplified tales of hey, mm-hmm. there's this one country where you yes. can kill, and here's what ha- happens that one time, you know more so as like i i i think it really starts to get you to question different beliefs or different mm-hmm. la la laws that we yeah. ha- have you know because this... that first one is very much about like gun con- con- control and stuff mm-hmm. like that like hey is it okay to use capital punishment or it, you know the, she's like, oh, you have a gun there. He goes, oh, it's not for sale. That's what I used to kill pe- <laughs> people with. And it's like, but you just seem so nice. Why would you say that? And yeah, it, it turns out it's like, no, we don't. We're not actually like yeah. murderers. We just we want to protect what we have here. Mm-hmm. And if someone like starts to ruin that, like as a 
country will decide like hey like y- you need to <laughs> you need to back off <laughs> mm-hmm. do you remember when we were watching american gods when they go to that town where vulcan lives yes this felt like the other side of the coin from that uh, i wasn't very intrigued by that first town i thought that was an interesting story and that was the thing about this show is that it was a lot of little interesting stories without a ton of character like this was just a series of fully realized thought experiments yeah one after another and it's not really about character development or growth like it's i started to realize i don't more to know make you if think yeah yeah like it's to make us think like i don't Okay, like, after the Volcano episode, like, Kino, like, she's been through something. Like, she feels affected. But it doesn't seem like there's that much carry through, like, from episode to episode. I look at the last episode and the first one. And, like, I don't know if she's, like, that different of a person. Like, I don't know what her flaws are. I don't know what it was that she's really learned besides just a lot of exposition about each country. And then she leaves and goes to the next country. And she doesn't, like share any of it like no story continues to be told no country really knows about any other country except for the big one on wheels that like travels around and has to go through another country to get anywhere i feel like it's less i mean the the name of the show is kino's journey Mm. so it, it like that implies it's less about kino and more about where she goes yeah and the you know the 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 places there so i i I feel like it's somewhat understandable to not know as Mm -hmm. much about her and it's her just experiencing these things yeah but i did like that this her entire goal was to travel like she's not going anywhere at the end of it she's not traveling you know along this path just to keep moving around there's no destination there's no goal she's not trying to accomplish anything she just wants to travel and i did like how direct that is Mm -hmm. especially like i mean people have always liked to travel but it's like a very current very modern contemporary passion people have people are travelers nowadays i I go on a date with somebody like that's all the guy wants to ask me is like where have you been where do you want to go next and i'm like i like comic conventions (laughs) like my goals aren't that lofty so i like that this was a show just about travel But the point of travel is that you go out there and you learn and you, like, bring stories back with you. Like, you share. And there's, like, the town will share with Kino. And Kino will, like, help the town if she can, you know, like with the Coliseum episode. But she doesn't, like, share one thing from one country to another. She's not like, oh, you know, over here they do it differently. Or just even a small thing, like... You know, they've got really great food in this place if you should ever visit it. I wish there was just a little bit more like that. I like Mm -hmm. that each episode is kind of self-contained, like, you know, city of the week. But just have a tiny bit more follow through to show that what happened in that country affected her after she left it. Like, there's still some imprint on her and it felt so, like, fresh. Like, any of these episodes could have been the first episode. Yeah. Yeah yeah um so you you mentioned the one with the volcano the yeah one about she she goes to this town and they're like how long do you plan to stay here and she's like three days and they're like oh thank god <laughs> uh, yes yeah, so you, you you can you can come in and enjoy your hospitality or enjoy, enjoy our hospitality and she had heard rumors of that t- town just being really nasty and really r- rude to people and she gets there and they're all so nice mm-hmm. um and she meets this girl i think in the i don't remember if in if they changed it in this new one or not i think they have her a name's, similar her name sakura yeah so i think in the original one from 2003 they um they they ch- in the american d- 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 dub they changed her name to lily for it to kind of make m- 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 more sense to us because she she mentions that like hey if you yeah. say my name just slightly wrong it's more of an insult so in the american dub they they would call her like silly willy or you, you, you oh. know just stuff like that yeah um 
whereas I think the stuff they called her in this one? Yeah, instead of Sakura, they call her, like, Sock or something well, like that. Uh, it says Nekara, which means gloomy, and Okura, which means slow. Mm. Um, is, is that the one I'm thinking of? Is she the one that... Yeah, yeah, she's the girl in the volcano episode. Okay, yeah. Yeah. That's right. Um... Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's this, it just seems like this normal town, just like almost too normal, and Mm -hmm. has a good time, and she meets this kid that is like super Mm -hmm. happy being where she she is, Mm -hmm. Uh, and then that night when, like, that that third or fourth night when she's gone, she's a little bit away from the town, and it's basically like Pompeii yeah. where a volcano explodes and the whole town or the, the whole the whole country you know mm-hmm. uh, is wiped out and she's just like oh shit like d- d- ha- what like wouldn't they have known wouldn't they have like seen some of the signs that mm-hmm. like hey we should like so she she opens up her uh like lunch bag that she got mm-hmm. from all, all all of them and there's like two notes in there and she reads the first one and it's f- from the parents of the girl and they're like by the time you're writing this we'll be dead like yes we we did know about oh. all of this stuff we wanted our daughter to make it a- out you know and to maybe j- j- join you um, but she was so like her dream was to stay there and to you know do this this I- 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 end and that she mm-hmm. she just she wanted to be here. So, yeah, <laughs> that thanks, episode's... you know. <laughs> yeah. It's so sad and it's so sweet, and I wish it would have been like a couple episodes earlier in the series, and then maybe we could have seen Kino like. So the thing about that country is that it's got it always had this reputation for being terrible to travelers, just like super rude and standoffish to everyone who came through. Yeah. And then they learn like, oh, that volcano up there, like it's going to erupt. Our clock is ticking. The next person who comes through, we're going to treat them like our friend. We're really going to welcome them because that's we don't want our reputation to be that mean forever. And so Kino goes and she experiences that. And then we don't see her share that story. We don't see her share any stories, but also like this is like two episodes from the end or something like that. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted her to take what she learned, what she saw, and just share that with somebody else. Like everybody's so closed off. Like I kind of hoped she would be... uh, Like I wanted her role as a traveler to be to include more of a role as a storyteller like she's just a story instead of a listener you want her to like be influential and Mm -hmm. okay that makes sense yeah like a lot of this show this show is so much like telling and not showing there's so much exposition there's so much like and like big broad exposition like well, you know that all the adults here in the country have that surgery to make them an adult. Like, everybody talks like that. I mean, it's, it's it, like I've, I've mentioned, it's like oversimplified yeah. stuff. So and, in that sense, it is kind of these caricatures of, well, here's this town that's like a weird religious cult. Uh, you, you know, so it's this like heightened sense, and they they do kind of play with genre a little bit, especially in that one um, yeah. when it has all of the 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 children there and 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 stuff, right? And it's like that fisheye lens; it makes it look yeah. really scary and stuff like yeah. that. You know, um, yeah. So oh. I don't know. It, it's it's <laughs> it's. it's great storytelling but i think it's it's a hard show to keep going if yeah. it keeps that same formula what it i agree with you about like the oversimplification and i think it did it pretty well because it made a lot of these towns and a lot of these stories feel like 
they're parables, like they're fables, like they're myths almost. Like the volcano town, like this entire town acting as one and all of them make the same noble choice. And there's one person who carried the story away. Like it feels like a parable or something. And that's a good word. Yeah. 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 Like you're supposed to get something out of it. Like it's for you. Like it's to teach you a lesson to get you thinking, which is fine. But I wish there was just more of like a just a little bit more of a traditional character's journey besides just like she physically travels like I wanted Kino to like learn something the way we're supposed to learn something yeah like, even if they introduced something more along the lines of like she's searching for her old master yeah like that like cuz we 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 get that one story about that one time I I think uh I, I I don't remember if she died in that one or not. If oh. the master died in that. But Yeah, so, I had trouble like keeping all the timelines together of like where are we? What's happening? Yeah. <laughs> when um, are we? Real fast in the chat uh to cringy boy here. Yeah, th- thank you for stopping by. Unfortunately, we are a super small channel, so I don't yeah. I don't I don't think we can do the like cheers and subscribers and all of that stuff yet uh, we're getting there one day yeah we are g- g- growing in size so thank you for stopping by though we Hello. appreciate it um what what other was there any other of the stories that stood out to you though melissa did you have a favorite one besides the the volcano one that seems to be the one that affected you the most yeah i think the volcano was the most impactful story but i really did like the big city on wheels and i like so it's this huge huge compound it's like a giant cylinder with just Mm -hmm. like massive tractor caterpillar tracks on the bottom of it it's not on wheels it's on like tank treads or something and it's all self-contained and it just travels along the countryside just like kino does Mm -hmm. and it's got everything it needs inside of it and everybody in the city just wants to see just wants to see just wants to explore and there's the school children where like at the end of their term they paint a mural of the favorite thing that they've seen over yeah. their term. That was really sweet. I loved that touch. Like I remember my elementary school doing like, okay, this year, like all the graduating sixth graders are going to paint like this section of the cafeteria in a mural. Like that felt like something very real and very tangible to like contemporary society when everything in the show felt like timeless and either yeah. like, way in the past or way in the future or just like some mythical extra human level that one's one of those ones where it's like i don't really know who's right and i don't know how i feel about what happened there Mm -hmm. um i mean because yeah there's that there's uh I, i think there's they're asking about like why aren't you evacuating the people like that are in the path and all of this stuff and they say something and and was like i'm just gonna pretend i didn't hear that it's like <laughs> yeah that cut, that almost makes me not like you kino yeah. like, i don't i don't know um, they want to go through like there's this mat hmm? I, I was just gonna say it's the, the classic example of like what happens when like an immovable yes, object yeah. you, you know meets up with the, the <laughs> that thing there's this <laughs> immense country stretching across like the entire planes and they're like we have to go through you we can't go around you here we go (laughs) we told you we gave you a warning here we're going like we are going to go through your countryside within your walls we're going to try and hit as few things as possible like you set this up you didn't have to build this big wall to like block us off from this stuff know they're a bull in a china shop and they really are trying to do as minimal damage as possible but they are this huge city so they do crush like a little farm in their way like they're livestock yeah, was, and maybe that like was the a thing like if they died. if they crush the agricultural thing yeah they they didn't necessarily kill people but that's all of their food mm-hmm. like if they have no f- food you're you're yeah. kind of just <laughs> killing them anyways you know mm-hmm. Um, but like they're 
they are trying to do as little harm as they possibly can. And when they're that big, like they've just got that damaging of a footprint just by their own size, but they can't be any smaller. They can't do anything else. Yeah. So like it's destructive, but it is as benevolent as it can possibly be. And they really try for that. And they're not like at war with this country they're going through. They're like, just passing by. Please don't mind us. We know. We know. We're sorry. We're just trying to get through here as quickly as we can. Like, I like that they were like, and they have the stuff. Like, they could destroy, like, really destroy if they wanted to, and they didn't want to. And um, that's a lot like the the Gunslinger Town episode. Like, Mm -hmm. they've both got this kind of similar theme of sometimes you just have to look at people doing their best. And harm is there, but they're really trying to negate as much as they can. Yeah. Like, you can't be perfect, but if you live your life trying to... You can't eliminate harm, but if you live your life trying to minimize harm at, as you're just going about your day, as you're just trying to live, that's all right. That's plenty. Yeah. And, like, that's not a message you get in very many things like i like that yeah i kind of like that she came away from the gunslinger town like okay i get you people like you're kind of necessary out there in the world and again you're not completely harmless but you are trying to like do as little harm as you could in the circumstances you have right I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's a good real world thing, but it's just an interesting theme you don't see in a lot of narratives. It's like, oh, in this fictional world, I kind of like this just because it's something I haven't seen before because it's new. Mm. I don't know if it's good, but it's new. Yeah. There's, um, I, I mentioned in the original one, it is a lot more quiet. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's there's one I think it's one of the first episodes first or second but it's um it I I, I guess that that's the one that reminds me of Lime Town uh, so it's not one of the new ones did mm-hmm. did you ever listen to Lime T- T- Town yeah yeah I listened to all the first season I haven't done this new season yet so yeah I've 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 not listened to the the new one yet but there's in this first episode of Kino's Journey, the original one from 2003, mm. um, she comes ac- across this guy who's gardening, and she stops, and she says, hello, and he, like, screams, like, he's startled, <gasps> and he's, he's just like, wait, like, can, can, am I'm, am I talking right now, or can you hear my thoughts? Oh. And, and she's like, no, you're like i can hear you and he's like okay but can you hear my thoughts and she's just like no like why would i be like (laughs) and so they she she's she stops in to like get some tea and he tells her the history of their country where they found um or they they made this liquid machine that if you drank it it could like transmit thoughts and stuff like that and so their whole country took it but it got so bad that in like everyone then had to live far apart because they they just they wanted silence like they mm-hmm. just they, yeah. they didn't want to be bombarded with all, this, <laughs> with all of the stuff with all of that with all of that stuff um and like the apparently the person she met was married and so like the husband and wife live separately and he like he capes up the garden because that's what she liked you know and all, all of the, the stuff and then she Kino eventually leaves and she goes by the house that she thinks is the is the wife's house and it's just this reflective mm-hmm. m- m- moment of like do you think I should go in and like explain the situation that he, like he still loves her and all of this stuff and she goes no I'm fine with that and just moves on and it like that's one thing that I kind of appreciate about the older one is Mm -hmm. it is more of just her and Hermes and her inner monologue of like I don't think I should interfere Mm -hmm. with this country I think the woman understands 
what is happening, all of the stuff. The one mm-hmm. after that, she m- ends up meeting a couple people who are in the they're they're in the snow, um, and it's freezing cold, and she meets these p- people who are almost dead, 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 dead almost dead. Uh, and she goes out to hunt r- 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 rabbits to feed them. Mm-hmm. And she has this whole, like, monologue of, like, well, I don't really want to kill these rabbits, but I need to, like, help these – or, like, I want to yeah. help these people and stuff like that. So I'm putting these r- rabbits to good use and all of that stuff. And then it turns out that those three guys are slave traders Ooh. and that they w- are then hoping to kidnap – Kino and do all of this chess stuff and so she ends up killing them and so it's that so she has this like this struggle of like i killed these rabbits to help these people but then i killed these people oh why did i kill these rabbits like that i and she ha- like she just has this like yeah do i do i continue helping people mm-hmm. do i still look for the good in people and do i value my fellow man more than the life of this a- animal and so it mm-hmm. is it, it is this more reflective i mean yeah we, we still get that in mm-hmm. in this but like we said we then end up following riku and shizu mm-hmm. which i i liked them yeah i i think they're fantastic characters i, I would have liked to see more of them but again I it's like to see them kind interact. of the same formula yeah, yeah. I was just saying, I, w- I would have liked seeing them interact with Kino. Like, they're in the same first episode together, and then they're really on separate paths after that. Yeah. And I was expecting them to come back together, or at least or befriend each other or something. I think my issue with the show, which is not its own issue, it's mine, really. It was just that I was looking for something more, just more traditional storytelling, more of like a character arc and like relationships. Like I'd want her to, I want her to have a relationship with somebody besides Hermes. Yeah. Like I wanted her to, you know, maybe not actively keep up with uh, the Prince. What is, what's his name again? Shizu, I just called him Prince Abs. Shizu. Okay. <laughs> Prince like, Abs. <laughs> maybe not like actively keep in touch with him, but like, Oh, we ran into each other again in this country. Wow. Like let's spend the day together. Like something like that. I, I mean, just, it happens, I, but <laughs> I, I think this show is so short that it's not, yeah. it's not substantive. If that makes yes. sense. Right. Yeah. Like, yeah. A, 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 again, we mentioned the idea of like, what if Kino was searching for her master? instead like that was the end goal to find that and then it just so happens that um the shizu and riku team like they go off on their own path uh to find a country to live live in but just then like if we saw more of each of them and to see the differing perspectives on yes. the different towns or if they happen to go to the same one to be like no it should be like this no it should be like that you know mm-hmm. to have that to ha- to ha- to have them take that kind of bland generic um like caricature of these mm-hmm. countries yeah. and actually flesh out the arguments yes i, I think that would be fant- fant- yeah. fantastic fantastic yeah, I would have liked to have seen that. Like, this show is so much like, hmm, think about it, won't you? Which is fine. Isn't but this like, an I d- interesting concept? Yes, but I want more of like, like, it's all stuff for your head, and it's not really stuff for your heart. Outside of like, little moments here and there with like the volcano episode. It's mostly like, the episodic characters that are tugging on your heartstrings, if they are at all. And I wished I was a little bit more attached to just like Kino, and I mi- yeah. I wished Kino was more attached to people. Last one I want to talk about really fast. Okay. What did you think of the sheep one? <laughs> the the sheep one I thought was absolutely ridiculous. I I kind of liked it, but I'm baffled as to why that was the final episode of the series. I, I think why there was one more end? after that. Um, I think it's it's in the okay. So the episodes are broken up, kind of weird. There was another thing where it's like I don't know how to like how long has this been going? Like they, it doesn't even 
So the story as a whole is structured kind of weird. Each episode also does not follow like a normal plot structure. Right. So like it's paced strangely. So I was like, is it over yet? Or how long have I been watching this? So I think there's like a segment after the sheep episode, but it is like the beginning of the last episode is the sheep. It might, it might be that, but yeah, like I, it's, that one almost seems more supernatural at the start when you don't know what's happening yeah. and it's just she runs into these wild shape while she's driving down the countryside mm -hmm. and the herd gets up and starts to like chase her and attack yeah. her and she has to like climb down this ravine and do all mm -hmm. of this stuff but when she finally goes Rambo on them and starts uh -huh. killing them, when the sheep are like getting shot, and they're, I, I guess the sheep that this sound they make is a bleat, is it's what it's so, called. It's so, which yeah, was they, the they first bleat. I I learned that that's what it's called. <laughs> the. the <laughs> And it's okay. so yes. funny to so hear like them because you know it's humans. You know yes. someone is like, Meh. Yeah, okay. Meh. So some of like the <laughs> background foley does seem like it is like, you know, an animal sound effects tape or somebody doing a very close like true to life imitation of a sheep <laughs> noise. But the main like the main antagonist sheep is just a guy yelling. No, it's all so of them are. When, when, or at, at, at least when, when she starts killing yeah, them. Yeah. Like, all the sound effects is just, ah! like, let's just get the ca ah! cast, yeah, to yes. just make these stupid sound effects. <laughs> and, like, I couldn't figure out, like, what, I I couldn't figure out what the tone of that, like, story was supposed to be, but it, it was so weird, because you are picturing just a bunch of voice actors just making those noises it's like all oh, i can think about is the behind the scenes thing like i don't know what to do with the so actual ridiculous. story you handed me like the 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 ju juxtaposition of like her lighting everything on fire and shooting yeah. these sheep which are making these ridiculous Ooh. noises it's funny like it, it, <laughs> I, I like i i was sweeping my room at that time and i had to stop and just like like not do anything else and just watch this because like i was like this is ridiculous it's amazing i love it <laughs> but then when she finally gets to the next ta town and you find out what's really g g going on it's supposed to be this like very serious thing of this country their main entertainment was these sheep fights yeah. and they had this whole animal rights movement mm -hmm. and that kind of took over and so they had to like stop doing these fights but then they had these like almost rabid sheep and they didn't know what to do with them so they just let them go out in the wild and so it's this idea of like you guys were terrible people like <laughs> but, but okay you're doing better like you you've you've fixed some stuff yes. you're still making jokes about it like which okay it's just a j j j joke but still like it's it's just like why would why would you think that just letting them go <laughs> would be any it's better yeah. now now there's someone else's problem like i just had to fight for my life and kill 30 sheep like <laughs> but like but like i i think when when they introduced that and they they finally revealed what happened they wanted you to be like again this like yes oh okay this is a, a you know this is yeah. something i should think about you know this very serious somber yeah, thing this... and all i can th th <laughs> think of is odd <laughs> 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 like abstract cerebral show and i i feel like i've said like more negative things than positive things about it there are parts of it i really like yeah i think i was just like i'm built to take in a more traditional story okay. than what this is and a more character driven story a more emotional story than what this is and like i respect it like i liked watching it but i'm like i I don't, I don't get it. Why isn't it different? <laughs> <laughs> it, d d d it does, I think, wrap up really nicely, though. Yeah, I like the ending. That was very sweet. We do get to know more about Kino and how she got started on yeah. her journey. 
uh, which is a horrifying tale. Mm-hmm. Um, but then at the end where she's just like, I'm going to take a nap. And when yeah. I wake up, I'll start, I'll finally start my journey. And H- Hermes is like, wait a minute. What? Like we just, we, we've been, <laughs> what have we been it's doing? Been, it's been 13 goddamn years. And we, what, you know, <laughs> um, but yeah, he's, 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 he's just like, I don't get it. Like, I don't, I don't get your philosophy on, mm-hmm. on that. And she goes, well, it's like every day is a new day, you know? Yeah. That's kind of the thing and that's mm-hmm. it like that's the point of this yeah. story. like every day is a new new mm-hmm. day there's always something new that's going to happen to you yeah and, and there's beauty in all of it yes and that i like that about it like a lot of stories that have this sort of you know reflection on society it comes off as like cynical or pessimistic but this yeah. like took these real like moral quandaries but it still had this real optimistic, positive feeling. I don't feeling even know to if it. I would say that. I, I mean, it just sort of like I said, it's like these thought experiments. It brings up like, a lot of issues of like murder and things to you. Like it deals with dark stuff, and it deals with like the really potential that stuff, humans yeah. have to be so harmful to each other. But at the end, like yes, it does show you there is still like so much beauty in the world, and like no matter what happens, like just keep going on your journey like just keep living life life is good and it i do like how positive the show is yeah, yeah it's it's positive but I don't, I don't know if i would say it's optimistic she's yeah, not she's not, not like cheerful. yeah she's she's not overly cheerful in the sense like things will get better like it yeah. just like just look to the sky you know mm-hmm. keep your chin up it's not, it's not it's not like that it's more she, yeah like she is reflecting Mm-hmm. on it and it's it's the the optimism in a sense where you saw a situation and you've learned something from from it yeah um might not be a very cheerful thing but you you know you are a better p- person or you've learned something about your character or you know something mm-hmm. like that so yeah. last interesting thoughts? watch definitely an interesting watch very different than a lot of other things I'm I've seen, so I'm glad I went for this. It's got yeah. some neat stuff in there. It's a good looking show. It's a good sounding show. We didn't yeah. really talk about the art at all, but the I, I art's was, really lovely. I was gonna say the art, yeah, is fantastic. That's one of the major improvements mm-hmm. um, from the original one. I think the, there's a lot more detail and attention to the artwork. Yeah, which adds its own beauty in a way right like Mm -hmm. just seeing these peaceful landscapes or these beautiful towns and stuff like that like that's another way for you to see like hey like this town might have some fucked up stuff but it's a beautiful town you know yeah um and the the original one is a lot more i i don't want to say bland but just a lot like it's not as greedy for attention if that makes sense it's a lot simpler artwork so but yeah i say go check it out it's one you can watch an episode or two yeah Uh, you don't have to like it's i mean you can binge the the whole thing if you want but it's not one that i think will make you necessarily want to binge the whole thing no it doesn't have that drive to it at all yeah just like hey i'm gonna watch an episode because i have half an hour (coughs) yeah so there you go okay pitch Uh, time kyle you ready it is pitch time i don't know why but twitch is saying we went offline i don't know why that's happening uh whereas obs is saying everything is fine anyways keep going because everything (laughs) is still recording i'm assuming Yeah. Um, yeah and we we will figure it out from there okay all right Return. pitch it. pitching uh i believe i we were kind of planning out our last couple episodes of the calendar year and i did tell you i have all holiday themed picks okay <laughs> holiday <laughs> themed picks yes yes good fun and i know you're not super duper on top of that idea so it's three holiday picks oh no 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 
I'm totally fine with okay. holiday. Okay. I'm not like I'm not the one to go like, hey, let's go, let's watch Meet Me in St. Louis or just on my own terms, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully that's not what you mean. No, you I would not like that's that's a movie for me. That would be a pick entirely for me and not for you, Kyle. I'm like I'm not gonna make Kyle watch Meet Me in St. Louis with me. It's just him sitting there while I gush for like an hour and a half. So that one's not on here. But yeah, I know you're not was a, a movie. You're not a big holiday movie person. So I pick three holiday movies with an asterisk at the end. Okay. And I can explain this asterisk at the end should you need me to. Okay. Pitch number one is a classic. You mentioned it earlier. It's Home Alone. Home Alone. And Home Alone Great is one. a tremendously popular movie. Everybody's seen it a ton of times. Everybody references it, but still, I think it's still underrated as a piece of filmmaking. Okay. And I would like to sit down and like really dive into not Home Alone, just as like fun 90s nostalgia and uh, yeah, keep the change, you filthy animal. And he gets keep the change, you filthy and animal. Can. And I really want to talk about the emotion and like the emotional storytelling of Home Alone and. Oh, for the and like we know what it is, but just for the audience member who maybe is not familiar with it, welcome, welcome to Home Alone. It is a 1990 movie directed by Chris Columbus, written by John Hughes, starring Macaulay Culkin, Catherine O'Hara, maybe my favorite actress ever, uh, and it's about a little boy who accidentally gets left home alone when his parents. And his whole family go off for a big holiday vacation, and he Best defends his house Christmas from some burglars. Yep. <laughs> okay, so pitch number one is Home Alone. Okay. Pitch number two is the movie Scrooged. This is from 1988. This stars Bill Murray, and it was directed by Richard Donner. Huh. This is an 80s power business retelling of A Christmas Carol, power where Bill business. Murray. Yeah, Bill Murray is like. <laughs> the Scrooge of the story. He's the head executive of this cable network. And he's all about just like the money. Like he makes this big flashy live event on Christmas Eve just to draw in like as many eyes as possible. And like, he doesn't have any emotional connection to the holiday at all. Like he sends his brother, his only brother, like a VCR, just like, yeah, secretary, send him a VCR. I don't care. And it's, a Christmas Carol, you know, he's visited by three ghosts mm -hmm. at the end. Spoiler alert. He learns to become a better person, but it's, it's really funny. It's really sweet. Like the character effects for these ghosts are incredible, like really cool practical effects on all of that. And home alone and Scrooged are both Bed movies. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, ah, oh, Kyle. Remember an American werewolf in London? Remember the gross dead friend? Oh, yeah. It's like that again. Awesome. And Home Alone and Scrooged are both movies that I think really hit the heart of the holidays. Like when I think about I these movies, I could weep at the beauty they are able to summon up in their I don't climax. think I've even heard of Scrooged I... before. Like that's not one that I'm f f familiar with. I didn't see it until like a couple years ago, but like the first time I saw it, like I really loved it immediately. And I've watched it like every year since then. You've probably seen the poster. It's like Bill Murray laughing and he's got a cigar and it, like a Santa hat and like a skeleton Maybe. hand is coming out to like light the cigar. Like I knew it as just a poster forever until my older brother who like you know, was of an age to actually see this movie when it came out. He's like, mm -hmm. no, it's a really funny movie. You should watch it. I think you'd like it. And okay. I did. Okay. Sounds good. Pitch number and three. Pitch number three is not really a Christmas movie, but Santa Claus is a major character in it. This is a movie called Rise of the Guardians. This is a is that the owl one. Nope, that's Legend of the Guardians, the Owls of Gahul, or something else. This is the problem with this movie. I think Tomato, it's a great Tomato. movie. It just has such a <laughs> generic title. Okay. Rise of the Guardians is a 2012 DreamWorks animated movie about the guardians of childhood. It's Santa Claus, the Easter Bunny, the Tooth Fairy, the Sandman, and their new recruit, and Star Jack. Lord. <laughs> 
different Chris. Chris Pine versus <laughs> their new recruit, Jack Frost. And it's all of them against the nightmare boogeyman, who's like this big, dark, shadowy guy called Pitch. And it's just them in a battle against this guy just for like children's innocence and dreams and things like that. And Santa Claus is in it. Like they go to the North Pole. Jack Frost is in it. So most of it is at winter. But I don't remember this being a Christmas movie. I think it takes place at like Easter. Yes. This might make it or break it for that one. How many noses does Jack Frost nibble? Oh, no. <laughs> None. I mean, he nips. You could say he puts a chill in the air that metaphorically bites your nose. Come on, literally. Jack. You had one job. <laughs> this, um, I don't know if I've seen this, like maybe since it came out and then I like rented after I saw it in the theater. But it is... I love the designs in this movie. It's a beautiful looking movie and it's a very sweet story. Okay. So I wanted to give you an option that like was not, is it, it was computer cr- animated? Yes. CGI. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I wanted to give you an option that was Christmas adjacent, but not overtly Christmassy. Okay. So those are my three pitches asterisk. And the asterisk is because this is the season of giving Kyle, if you deem none of these fit for you, I am offering you a, finger quotes, gift card where you are allowed to pick your own thing under the general theme I have given you. Like, I have given you a gift card. You can get whatever you want (laughs) as long as it's from Best Buy. If you think you've got a better winter winter holidays, Christmas time sort of pitch that you would like to throw to me, I I would allow you to do so in the spirit of giving. I'm debating if you th- see that as a challenge <laughs> or or if you think so low of me that <laughs> that it's no, it's, it's no, like look it. I know you don't like c- c- Christmas <laughs> stuff you're going to hate me after this week no. let's just do something you like <laughs> No I, you just said like you're a big <laughs> Christmas movie person and I'm like what if you're like no, no I don't I don't like Scrooge I've seen like the thing about Christmas movies is that they play over and over and over so here's, again. So here's I might have pitched you things that you are completely dead tired of. And so I wanted to give you an out if you needed one. So here's the thing. I'm not yes. going to take you up on the gift card okay. hard thing. Because okay. I'm not a chicken, okay? Um, <laughs> <laughs> but, no, I mean, that's kind of the purpose of this show, right? Yeah. We both look for things um like we we we're exploring what's out there. That's mm-hmm. kind of where the whatnots got its name. Yeah. We can we can watch an anime, a manga, a comic book, mm-hmm. or whatnot, which is yeah. this etc. thing. Yeah. Um, and then we had the like theme of space and stuff like that. So it's whatnots mm-hmm. like astronaut. Anyways, we were exploring all of this stuff that could be out there and so there's this idea of like yeah i do really want to share the things that i've seen and i i love like we just did on kino's journey but like i also want to find new stuff i haven't Mm -hmm. seen like oh what's that what's this one what's that one and Mm -hmm. it could be genres i don't like it could be stories that i'm would normally be not be (laughs) interested in so i think i'm gonna go with Rise of the Guardians. Okay. That one been, sounded interesting to me. Yeah, it's been a long time since we've done like an American animated feature. Have we done like an American animated movie in my run of this? Or we've done a couple TV shows and we've done like some anime Japanese movies. But yeah, I threw it in there as like an interesting pseudo holiday, but really non conventional story. And just like a medium and a genre we haven't visited in quite some time. There you go. Okay, cool. Rise of the Guardians is what we will do for this next week. Um, We hope you guys enjoy it and watch along with us at home so you guys can come back next week. Hang out with us. Be part of the conversation. Twitch.tv slash the whatnots or the whatnots.com slash live streams. Uh, if you enjoyed this podcast or any of our other ones, uh, patreon.com slash the whatnots is where you can throw us all of your change, all of your your couch cushion quarters and <laughs> stuff like that. It'll help us keep the lights going. Excuse me. 
It will help keep our um, talking motorcycle running. Yes, exactly. Um, that being said, I coming up here, we are trying to plan yes. our the the whatnot's third year retrospective. Uh, so keep your eyes and ears out for more details on that. We haven't finalized anything. I'm still in the planning and talking stages. Um, but if everything goes according to plan, that should come out either end of December or early January. Uh, it might be that first uh, weekend in January or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. So be on the lookout for that. That's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to get as many... Uh, people involved with the whatnots yeah. as we can and we can just sit here and talk about that so we can figure out if we have done an american animated uh, <laughs> thing yeah so that should be a lot of fun we'll talk about our favorite episodes we've done this year and stuff like that so good stuff yeah. um again just in case you guys forgot since i mentioned the retrospective next week rise of the guardians uh we hope to see you there melissa where can they find you on the interweb you can find me on twitter and instagram at wilkywit that's w-i-l-k-y-w-i-t and you guys can find me at yo kyle springer on both twitter and instagram uh, and if you guys want updates for this podcast the review show or any of our other ones you can follow us on twitter at the whatnots i'm i'm hoping for next week to uh, to get us like a little animated stuff so we don't have to like say our things every oh. time so it has my like yo kyle springer will like pop up and for you it'll be <laughs> like i I, I, I have all of the like Twitter and Twitch and Patre and Patreon in the like lower third of uh -huh. of the stuff, but that's more like we only say it once, like yeah. at the beginning. I, I I guess we said it multiple times this mm -hmm. one, but um for people who just like happen to stop by for a minute yeah. or so, you know, be like, hey, the whatnots on Twitter. <laughs> Um, that is it. I guess we will see you guys this next week. Adios, guys. Bye. Bye.